the I wanting that I associate with request is the thing that has to go. You have a picture, that I wanting comes with a picture attached. You've asked the question by yourself, so to speak, is in the rules for decision terms, and you've set an answer in your own terms. That's the picture. You, the other day when you were talking long distance to Val, and Val seemed to be upset, I remember you saying, well, it seems like maybe you had a picture in your mind, Val, of how the trip was supposed to go. You know, that we were, in your mind, we were to come out there to Cam Loops first and then go down to maybe Seattle and California and maybe across the country or something like that. And, you know, that was, you were coming and helping guide to the, to the point of seeing, yeah, if you have a picture set, if you have an investment in the outcome, then you, you still must believe there's some kind of a form that would be best. And the whole purpose of everything we do is coming to hold the torch out in front, so to speak, or stay in that place of right-mindedness where you, you see you're the dreamer of the dream and things are orchestrated and there isn't a sense of, of personal request. That the suggestions or, or requests or whatever you want to call them, as they come through you, are made when you're lined up with the Holy Spirit and just trying to be truly helpful. And there's no charge attached to, you know, how it works out. The gift is in the giving. The suggestion is part of the gift. And there's no expectation of when the gift will be opened, if it will be opened, how it will be opened, you know, how things are to go, how things are to unfold and form. That's really the distinction we're trying to get at with everything we go into. mentioned in earlier today that I guess she has a list for groceries and there was a request for individual coffee, coffee packets. packets or whatever. I mean, again, even with all the logistical things, the stuff we've talked about is that as long as the mind believes in specifics and it believes in the ego belief system, it has an ordering of thoughts. That's what it means to be wrong-minded or believe in the ego is to have a hierarchy of illusions, including preferences. And the key thing we've attempted to talk about over and over has been, you know, just examine, just watch those preferences. You know, as you continue to start to see that judgment or ordering of thoughts offers nothing of value, then you will question it. You will get so set on your one function, on your single purpose, or as Rhonda was just saying, all you have to do is think one thing, that you're the dreamer of the dream. And that's, that's the simplicity of it. And as you do that, you see that you can't, you can't be the dreamer, you can't be back from it all, and continue to judge and order and have hierarchies, that they don't go together. All the peace and joy and love comes from being in the dreamer position and from seeing the world differently, you know, and giving it another purpose and not being ordering and judging and fragmenting. And all the pain and misery comes from ordering, judging and fragmenting and perceiving yourself as caught in the dream. So like even with the, you know, the request for coffee, it's kind of like, as long as budgetary, or as long as there seems to be enough money in the envelopes to buy things, and it, it doesn't seem to be get too extreme, <laughs> see, you can see where preferences and whims taken to the, you know, out to the nth degree, could seem to get into all kinds of logistical things. 
Oh, we'll just get everybody. Yeah, and I have a feeling we'll have want. to deal with that real soon. Yeah. Because I'm going way over budget with filling everybody's requests. And, and so, so far there's been enough money because we had, I had a cushion in there from money that I had saved up, but now it's dwindling fast. And that's when so, you come together. It's part of the logistical meeting yesterday was about uh, buying the foods that are you know, easy to cook or not even easy well, to cook. Plus better, there's, quick. you know, there's the pantry is stuffed yeah. full. Yeah. People are going to have to start eating that. I don't care if they don't want to cook. Maybe it's not such a good idea yeah. to ask people for their request if that's what seems to be pushing over the budget. Well, I think this whole thing is going to be an experiment, and I just, as I was leaving the store today and adding up in my mind what I've already spent this week, which is way over $100, not way over, but somewhat over $100, um, I just thought, well, it'll be interesting to see how this works out. You know, and then when I came home and could hardly find any room in the pantry to put the few things that I bought, because I really didn't buy that much. But it was $40 worth. Um, I thought, well, this is funny. I'm going to buy groceries and I can barely fit them in the cupboard. I, that pantry has never, ever been that full since I've lived here. Is it full of things people have requested and well, are not eating? Yes, but now they've changed their mind, apparently. Because initially Tom said, oh, I love these rice things. And then the other day he said, I don't want to cook. Well, and you know, you said you like the rice things, and you like the ramen, but then you said you don't want to cook. And so I think, well, okay, one week you say one thing, and then the next week you say another thing. It'll just be interesting to see how this works. You know, so cookies and uh, you Kool Aid know, and coffee. You know, that again, stuff is expensive. what I said initially when I about the suggestions when there seems to be there seem to be a mutiny of you know I want some certain things that the, the whole idea of a suggestion pad but I remember initially saying why don't you just have if people have something maybe one or two items yeah and I remember making that suggestion because you can see the other end of the swing or the pendulum For the first end is the mutiny kind of like hey I exist too yeah. I have preferences and I want to be noticed and the other end is Oh, this is kind of nice, this list thing. I'll just, yeah. you know, keep filling it and out. And I noticed that, like, Tom had requested, his two requests were coffee and salad dressing. Well, there's probably five, eight bottles of salad dressing in the house, either in the refrigerator or in the pantry, but he wanted a different kind. So we have one more bottle, of, and he wanted coffee. Well, there's, I can't, you know, a whole bunch of coffee in the house, too. But he wants different kind of coffee so it's it's just it's all duplicating stuff that people want something a little bit different than what's already here even it's not like we don't have salad dressing that's for sure you know and your sense is that if it's on the list they want it now not when the other stuff runs out well I, people put it on the list I went to the store it's what I bought my sense is if people put it on the list I'm not the babysitter here. If people put it on the list and I have the money, I'll buy it. And when the money runs out, then I'll call a logistic meeting and say, okay, you guys, how do you want to handle this? Because I'm just the messenger here. I'm not the babysitter. I'm not the one that's going to say, oh, excuse me, you asked for salad dressing, a certain kind, but you didn't, you know, you need to, uh, I, I don't want to have that role either because that feels like being a mother to everybody. <laughs> I'm not trying to step away from being a mother to two people. I don't want to take on more. Or being so, even a mediator of, yeah. like with the salad stuff, if yeah. there was a request for salad stuff or green stuff and then it doesn't seem to be eaten or it starts to rot, yeah. the mediator you know, can't be the one in the middle to you right. know, to have to answer for that. Right. I bought more lettuce, and there's already lettuce in the refrigerator, but people say they won't eat that lettuce. So now there's two things of lettuce in there. You know, I mean, it's stuff like that. It's questioning so, the preferences, too. I mean, that's why you know, we have to... I don't... 
you can't even expect, you know, people that aren't into the Course and, and can't start to even start to grasp some of the things that these are. You can't expect, I don't expect Mandy or Matthew or Tom Kern to really start to see the underpinnings and the metaphysics of why it's important to watch their food preferences or any preferences, for example, but with, with everyone else, this has been gone into very deeply. That's one of the main things that Tom and I talked about when initially when we when you guys left to come up here and we went into things and talked, it was like after several days it was the awareness was kind of like, Oh my gosh, I never realized how strong my food preferences were and how many I had about the kinds of cokes even. It wasn't just about eating out or specific things, but even, even even as specific as the kinds of Cokes. The Coke from McDonald's. The Coke from McDonald's. The Coke from Burger King. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, those kind of things. It seemed to vary um, minuscule. And yet, when you're in that mode, they seem to be important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have to be questioned. I may just go for a week without buying groceries till the food supply goes down a bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if all the chips get neat, eaten up, all the peanut butter and jam gets eaten up, all the bread gets eaten up, then people will have to cook pasta or rice or something. I mean, I, I guess. I, I'm just, I, I felt myself too today stepping back from it and just saying it, well, I don't know what any of this means, and I don't know what any of it's for, but I, you know, I'm just here to watch what happens, you know, and I just felt myself going to the store and getting what was, the only things I got were what was on the list, I didn't get anything else, and I, you know, just had the thought of, well, I, I'm just going to watch how this all unfolds and how it all works. You know, the whole thing of eat what's served, another step of that would be eat what's there. Can you imagine the followers of St. Francis? Sometimes they went for days without getting anything, a loaf of bread, and then sometimes usually it was a loaf of bread or something like that. You can imagine them just all sitting around and saying, Ah, oh, we're running out of such and such and this and that. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, it's... it's you know, it gets the preferences run amok, is what it gets down to. I'm just later and all fight about this stuff. I don't want to, it's not worth it to me. I, you know, I've, I've spent enough days being not at peace about it, and I'm not going to do that anymore. And I'm not going to engage in fights with people about it. Good. It's good for all of us. You know, and, you know, I am open to suggestions, I am open to whatever anybody thinks they'd like to do. Um, I mean, right now it just none of it seems important to me. And, you know, and I see it as an opportunity just to look at stuff, you know, just to experiment with all of it. Let's see.